There we go. Hi, everyone. I'm Tim Von Rieden at ConceptCookie.com, and today I am joined by the wonderful Mel, but better known to you guys, I'm sure, as Purple Kecleon. Say hi. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> and uh, today marks the first of our four Halloween live streams that we're doing on Concept Cookie. In each of these live streams, we're taking an artist that I really respect, and I'm going to be drawing with them. So today is Mel, and we decided we're going to be doing a Frankenstein concept. And as promised, every week I will be dressing up. And if this week, if you can't tell who I am, I think you need to watch some more cartoons because I think this one's really obvious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you have seen it, I hope you appreciate it as much as I do because I love Adventure Time. And then, as always, if you have any questions, even if they don't pertain to what we're working on specifically, you can always ask them on the side, and I'll be kind of the moderator today. So if you have any questions specifically for uh, Mel, just feel free to ask them, and I will make sure she uh, sees them. All right, so then without further ado, let's just go ahead and start drawing. Let me switch from my normal screen. There we go. Oh, man. Yeah, we have a bunch of comments already. Nice. Oh, never mind. It's just like people asking, when is it going to start? <laughs> oh, nice. All right, we're good. So I don't think I've ever actually drawn a Frankenstein before. I don't think I have either, actually. Like the more I was thinking about this morning, and I was like sketching out a little dude, I'm like, I have never drawn a Frankenstein guy. I think I'll draw animal Frankenstein monsters. <laughs> <laughs> actually, um, I've been asking all my friends, so now you got to answer this one. All right, so October is the only month I watch Halloween movies. So what's your favorite Halloween movie? Oh, jeez. I don't even... I can't even remember. Wait, there was one. Oh, I like, um... I don't know how much this counts, but since it has Frankenstein in it, it's, a uh, Young Frankenstein. The, Ooh, wow, yeah, like, that's Yeah, old movie. Like, a lot of people haven't seen that, I guess. And, yeah. like, that's kind of... <laughs> a classic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's always weird to me. Like, people <laughs> haven't seen that. That's how I feel like when I hear when people haven't seen Hocus Pocus. Um, well, I don't know what that is. What? You don't know what Hocus Pocus is? <laughs> I might, if, like, it might have been something I saw but didn't know the title of. Oh, it's like the movie with the three witches. It's like a Disney Channel movie. <laughs> Shoot, I don't know. I'm not oh, so good with movies. Oh, you're not good with movies? No. I've, I've seen, like, some classics and then, like, I don't know. Oh, my, my cat's meowing. Come over here. <laughs> no, but yeah, I haven't, um, I haven't actually watched a lot of movies. Like, I'm not super big on movies. Not for, really like, any reason. I just don't get around to it. Oh, it's more of, like, a timing issue? Yeah, yeah. And, like, I don't have a uh, cable or anything, so. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm the same way. I only have Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, let's see here. Um, someone said the weather here in mid... So someone's watching from Wales and says it's inspired by our theme. So he lives on a seaside with a ruined castle and we are having a dry thunder and lightning storm. And just to top it off, there's a full moon. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, someone says, you know what really ruins October for me? Being allergic to pumpkins. But this what? last year makes Halloween so much better. <laughs> Holy crap. God, that would suck. I've never even heard of pumpkin allergy. Could you imagine trick-or-treating as a kid, too? No. Oh, man, that's got to be rough. That would be sad. Um, someone says, I'm so excited. Mel is such an inspiration to me. Oh, that's really nice. I hope they like it. Frankenstein cat. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to give some random body parts, like bird arm. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, someone's asking a question about the concept cookie contest, and it will be announced tomorrow, and it will last till the last week in October. But I'm pretty sure the theme will be uh, Vampire's Sister. So you got to do the vampire that we did two years ago, and then kind of interpret her younger sister, or what his younger sister would look like. <laughs> uh, 
Um, Zemi FTW asks, how can you have this much swag? <laughs> I don't know how anyone would answer that. <laughs> Um, yet, oh man, I'm going to butcher this name, I'm sorry. Yaxel Loreen Sanchez Suero asks, <laughs> I'm in Dominican, Dominican Republic, and here it is at 3 p.m. local. Where are you? Uh, I'm in Nevada, Las Vegas. And I am in Wisconsin. <laughs> We're like in two of the greatest states. Oh, yeah, I can't even like <laughs> name a city in Nevada besides Las Vegas. Wait, I can name Reno. Reno. Yeah, Reno. Yeah. Oh yeah, but I only know that because I loved the show back in the day. <laughs> I know. <right? laughs> <laughs> how true or like how accurate is that to like Nevada? Ah, uh, I don't go outside nearly enough to be able to. <laughs> 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 yeah. I like the honesty. Oh, it sounds like the person that has the allergy lives in Denmark, so they don't celebrate Halloween. So they don't suffer that much. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> It makes it a little better. Yeah. It's so funny, like, whenever I do these live streams, I always just expect everyone to be American. But usually, like, three quarters of the viewers are not from America. Dude. Looks like crazy? your expectation is just totally wrong. Oh, I know. It's blown out of the water. All right, here's cool, though. So someone's saying... Uh, my art always looks overall soft, kind of blurry. Do you have any tips to fix that? Um, working with hard brushes helps. Like, like that definitely. By I guess by definition, like if you think it looks too soft, um, working with hard brushes with like, uh, not a super lot of blending, definitely can help there. You just really have to try different brush settings. To be honest. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that. Someone's asking, when are you going to create another video tutorial? Oh my god. I, I don't <laughs> You're know. So busy right now, yeah. Yeah, there's so much going on. Dude, speaking of uh, your Adventure Time outfit, I get to do a cover for the comic. What? Really? Yeah, Wait, I'm excited the, about that. Because uh, I know, is it the like the normal one that they sell at like, comic book stores? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm super excited. And like, I just finished a Steven Universe one like two or three weeks ago. Or oh my god, now, weeks do ago. they contact you then? Um, yeah. See, now that's cool. Yeah, yeah, it was super cool. So then, I don't know if you're allowed to say this, but what did you have to do on the cover? Oh, the base, uh, I just did... Oh, for which one? Um, both. Oh, for Steven Universe one, I just did, like, the main four. But, like, they really lax. Like, uh, you can just kind of do different thumbnails, and they'll be like, this one looks good, or whatever. I, I like this one. And, like, it's really, really laid back. It's, like, it's not trying to be super... Like, oh, do it exactly this way. It's just kind of like, do something you think would look good as, like, a thumbnail, and we'll talk at each stage, and it was really nice. For the Adventure Time one, I actually wanted to just to do the uh, thumbnails today because I haven't had, like, a super good idea for what I want to do for it yet. Hmm. Is there, like, a specific theme for the color? No, no theme, which is what makes it so hard. I'm like, shoot. Wait, seriously? Yeah. Like, did they give you at least the title of what that comic will be? No! Oh, man. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. So I'm just like, oh, I guess I'll 
figure something out. I mean, it's not like a big deal, but it's so like, it's like when you don't have any like limits. It's like, well, I have to figure out somewhere to start. Like, who do I want to draw? I think then some limits when I do my freelance work. Yeah. Like when they're like, just go for it. It's like, well. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, well, maybe narrow it down a little. Yeah. Um, someone say, I've enjoyed watching your time-lapse stuff. This is the first time I'm watching a live stream, and I enjoy watching you guys work in real time. That's good. I definitely think there's a huge difference between watching a live stream and watching someone do it, like, in real time. Yeah. I think, like, it's kind of nice when people are present to answer questions, too. Like, I like listening to people talk about what they work on. Especially if they really like working on it, and it's like, I, I guess it's soothing. It like gets you excited. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Someone's joking and said, "Uh, sorry, I can't understand you guys. You're speaking American." <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh boy. How uh, could I better speak? I don't think I can even pull off an accent. It, I don't even want to embarrass myself right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, someone's asking what programs are we using. So I'm using Photoshop CS6. I'm using Paint Tool Sci. And I know like people ask me a lot, um, do you feel, because I kind of feel like I could hop between any softwares. I think it's just more of a personal preference. I don't feel like there's one that's better than another. Yeah, for the most part. I think that's true. Like, uh, the feeling of the artwork will be different, like, certainly, because the brushes will be different at first. But, like, mm -hmm. when you start to, like, customize it toward how you work, it doesn't it doesn't get that different. The one thing I do like that Photoshop doesn't have that paint tool side does have is, like, just the line smoothing ability. Oh, yeah. A lot of people really like that. And, like, I've never really needed to use it, but people always tell me, like, oh... It works really well, and I'm like, that's cool, because I like I don't have experience with it, so it's like good to know there's a cool feature like that in the I program. Know that. I think I honestly just assumed you always had it on. What? No way! Yeah, I have it set to zero. Oh wow, you have really clean line strokes. I I guess it comes with like <laughs> ten years. I just feel I'm so like hasty, and I don't trust my brush strokes as much as I do smoothing, so that's why I'm always like. When I look at someone's work, I'm like, oh, they they might have a line smoothing on, but oh no way, I yeah, I don't do that. All done. <laughs> Someone answered your the question that was asked to you about um, how do you have so much swag? They say Mel produces her own swag. They that you produce so much that it rubs off on other people. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> a pretty good answer. Um, someone's asking, but I think we'll do it when we kind of get to that area. They're asking for an example for how to shade and draw torn cloth and or skin. Hmm. Um, wow, those are both kind of complex. Mm-hmm. I guess for to simple it a little bit, whenever I draw skin, I usually lay like a darker foundation color, and then I fill up my lighting on top of it. But with skin, I think people try to have too much of a value contrast, where sometimes subtle contrast in the, the lighting, I feel, works a lot better to represent skin or sometimes like too much of a value range, it actually starts to look like plastic or like it's wet. And I think that's um, the wrong impression. But yeah, torn cloth is in another, Jeez. that's another tough one too. It depends on what type of cloth too. Because mm -hmm. then you have to break it down into like what material is it? Does it have a texture to it? Yeah, like how, how much does it reflect? Yeah. Exactly. Um, someone's saying it would have been really funny if Mel had just started speaking fluently in Spanish or whatever about 
or any other language after that person said about them speaking American. Oh my god, I I cannot. I can barely speak Spanish. <laughs> I know, like, my high school bare minimum requirements. Yeah, I know that, and I know enough French to still be embarrassingly bad. Oh, uh, that's the one language. I'm, I've been, like, trying to learn it for the past six months. And, like, I'm still really new. Oh, French is really cool. I just wish I'd had more time for it. Oh, yeah, I love friend, France. I want to, like, go there, I would say, in the next couple of years. I just feel like that's such a pretty place for even just referencing alone. Yeah, it really is. Like, I've been trying to learn Japanese in the past few months. Oof, I gave up on that one. That one was rough. I can it's read so and write. so hard. Katakana and hiragana. Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. And, like, kanji I started on, but, man, that's a whole... Dude, thing. yeah. Like, I, like, really more seriously picked it up because, like, I'm going back in December, so I was like, well... Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm going, awesome. Yeah, it's going to be super fun. Like, hopefully I'll get into Comic Kit and be able to sell there again. Like, if not, I'll just be going for fun. Oh, my gosh, that's kind of the reason I'm going to Australia next year and literally I'm going because there's a convention nearby. Which one? Um, oh, gosh, hold on. It is AVCon. Mm-hmm. But, like, I'm almost thinking, like, conventions are a way for, like, artists, if they want to travel, like, hopefully the convention will make some of that money back so then the traveling fee isn't as... Yeah, yeah. Sometimes is. Yeah, that's definitely, like, part of why I wanted to do Comic Cat is, like, you know, selling somewhere and taking a trip. Like, it can be stressful, but, like, it's really cool when it will, like, pay for itself and you get to meet a lot of really cool people. I really I like that. I to Japan doing that. Sorry, what'd you say? How was it when you went to Japan? Oh, it was so fun. Like, it was really weird because there were a lot of people who, like, knew my Pixiv. And they were like, well, they were saying in Japanese, like, oh, I really love your work. It's really cool that you're actually here and stuff. And I was like, holy shit. I was like, I didn't know so many people actually, like, followed me in Japan and, like, would show up. <laughs> it was really neat. Yeah. Oh, I can imagine. One of, my, one of my friends went to Japan for six months, and she was like, I can't believe how popular Pokemon still is here. Yes! Like, every fucking grocery... I shouldn't, sorry, sorry. Like, every <laughs> grocery store has, like, a million little Pokemon, uh, like, kids' kids items, like, lunchbox or, like, um, just, just whatever, like, tiny gummies, and it's still super big, and, well, of course, I really like that, but... <laughs> I just find it so surprising. Like, I thought the craze would have died down because in America it kind of... I mean, it's still alive a little bit. But, well, you know, I take that back. I would say it's stronger than it has been in, like, the past five years. Yeah, it's it's like... I think in Japan it's because they can just do all their cute little marketing things and everything's so close together there, so it's, like, easier to do events and go to them and stuff. Oh, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, because it's like, well, if there's a Pokemon event going on in, like, Washington, D.C., I don't, I can't really just, like, hop on a train and be there in an hour. Yeah. Where else have you traveled to? Um, Australia, France, um, I had a layover in Fiji, but that doesn't really count. <laughs> um... Yeah, it was France to do some work for Transform Ice and Australia to sell at a convention, um, Supernova at Brisbane. Mm. Or I should say Brisbane, as everyone called it, and I didn't know that. <laughs> They're just being nice when you would say it. Yeah. And um, Japan. Actually, Japan was the first time I left the country, I think. Yeah. What do you mean so, you left the country? Oh, I mean, like, Japan was the first time I actually, like, left the U.S. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was... That's kind of a it big was so weird. Yeah, fall. yeah. You really went for it. Yeah, like, I think um, I went to Canada afterward, so... Hmm. How was it up there? It's the same, almost. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's different, but... Really similar. It's like a, a weird alternate U.S. I've always kind of wondered that about 
um, Canada. Yeah, yeah. I had like a Canadian friend we were visiting. It was pretty cool. I was I get really intimidated by like the border patrol people though. It's like I don't so happen. S- nothing happens, but like they're so scary just because. Hmm. Yeah, I've never I had don't. to deal with that yet. Yeah, I I don't like it a lot. Actually, I don't like flying either because it feels like everyone treats you like a criminal, and I know it's like oh we're looking out for, you know, people doing bad stuff. But, like, I'm never doing stuff, so it just kind of (laughs) sucks. Have you ever been pulled aside for, like, the random search? Uh, no, I don't think so. But, Uh, like, um, yeah, yeah. Actually, I can't think of a time. There was a time when, like, they looked at my bag because I don't... Where was I think it was because I had watercolors. And they were like, oh, gotta look at your whole bag in case you had a bomb instead. And I was like, oh, okay. (laughs) Oh, you're an artist? I'm sorry, you're going to have to step aside. Yeah, basically. Oh, that's funny. Oh, here's a question for you. It has eight thumbs up, so a lot of people want to know. So how do you pick a specific color palette for a piece? Do you see them in your head or just improvise? Oh, it's like always improvised. And I know people hate that answer. I'm very sorry about that. Um, like, it did come from a lot of trial and error. Like, me picking these colors is, like, the result of years of picking colors I did not like. Um, (laughs) so, like, I just naturally started to avoid the colors that I didn't really want to put together. It wasn't, like, one day I suddenly was awesome at it. And even now, I'm not like, man, these are amazing colors. It's like, uh... It, it just sort of happens because my inclination is to go toward these colors. Like I've tried for a really long time to um, experiment, see what colors are good, see what ones aren't so good. Um, in my like a bunch of speed paintings where I'd like pick out like four colors, mess with them in like every way I could, and that's kind of what I did here. I picked out like three colors and then kind of mixed them together. Mm-hmm. So. I'm sorry, the answer is so not helpful to people who want to know, like, how to pick out good colors. Like, think, there's, like... like honestly, though, it's, like, just purely through practice. Yeah, it is. It's, like, intuition, like, intuiting, well, these are the colors I want to put together, and here's how they would work good. And, like, I know that's really hard because people want to know, like, well, why did you pick that exact saturation and that exact hue of yellow? And I'm, like, I don't know. I would love to tell you. I had to figure it out myself. Mm-hmm. Color, I feel like it's not an easy question to answer. Oh my god, it's not because it's a lot so. Of trial. Yeah, it's it's a lot of trial and error because it's so relative. Like if I change the hue on one color in this piece, it could go from like pretty pleasant to just pretty awful. Mm-hmm. And like it's it's so important because then people feel like you know they make a tiny error. And then the whole thing suddenly looks bad, and they don't understand why. And that's really, really difficult. It's, I've experienced that more than once. It's not like I always knew how to pick out colors I liked. It's, I wish people yeah. would see like the, the errors, you know. Oh, my God, yeah, because I have, like, hundreds and hundreds of pieces of just, like, colors that weren't very good and I didn't like so much. And, like, even now, I'm like, well, these, these could be more interesting, and I think I'm going to, like, actually try... Something that's not like standard colors I like. These these colors are basically the colors in a purple Cacleon, so <laughs> go to colors. Yeah. Um, someone is asking, can you give an advice for those artists that want uh, to follow a freelancer lifestyle? Oh my goodness. You have to be drawing all the time. Like if you can't draw every day for a few hours and you can't like focus that energy on like specific projects um, it becomes harder to do that. <clears throat> Not to imply you can't if you aren't like working on projects or like if you can't work for several hours or a day. It's like not to say that, it's just that makes it a lot easier because when you output a lot of work more people see it. Like that's just how it goes. And like it's really hard when people go like, man, no one's looking at my work right now. And like 
that that's a really awful thing to deal with. So it's like the more you draw, the more people see it. The more you draw, the better you'll get. So it's like a good thing all around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like talking to you, you're always like working super, super overload. <laughs> Yeah, I always have so many things I want to do. I always have so many projects I'm just, like, super invested in. Which is good, though. That's really good. Yeah, it, like, keeps me busy and focused. As long as you don't burn yourself out. I'm trying hard not to. Like, I try really hard to, like, force myself to take a break. Mm -hmm. Just whenever I feel like I can do it without feeling bad. <laughs> yeah, right? Because sometimes, like, do you ever get the feeling when you play a video game you feel guilty? Dude, yeah, definitely, and, like, to even play a video game, I'm like, damn, I could be coloring, like, three, I could have colored three comic pages by now, and instead I was doing this, and that's, like, that's so bad, like, thinking that way is pretty awful. Yeah, it's <laughs> but, so, <pretty> like, <laughs> yeah, so it's always, like, if I want to play a game, I'll be like, okay, I have to get this many hours of work done, and at least this many uh, pages or whatever. And, like, that really helps me feel like, okay, for the rest of the day, I can just do errands I need to do and then, like, chill out. And that yeah. helps a lot. I fully understand what that, what you're going through with that stuff. Yeah. Or, like, you have to justify doing something in your head. Yeah. I have to be like, well, I have already done a page and I got other stuff to do tomorrow, so I guess I'll take a break. Like, mm -hmm. it's really hard, because you, you don't want to burn out, or else you won't want to draw it all, and getting past that is really horrible. Oh, yeah, that's the worst feeling, when you don't even want to draw anymore. Yeah, it's like, it's especially bad when it happens in the middle of a lot of stuff needing to be done. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're forcing drawing. Yeah, and that's, that's awful. All right, let's see. So, Sweeness is asking... Uh, so is this what you guys do primarily for a living? Are there ever times when you don't enjoy it because because it is work? I sometimes wish I could pursue my hobby as a career, but a lot of folks I know say that doing what you love for a job is not so lovely. Um, I think that really depends person to person. Because like, this is what I do every day. This is the only thing I want to do. It's like the only thing I've ever wanted to do. So it's hard for me to like conceive anything else. Yeah. I agree. Where I love what I do, and I do what I love. Yeah. Like, I know it's hard for a lot of people because they don't figure out what exactly they love and like how to make it profitable, and like that sucks. Like, yeah, that I can understand. Like being frustrated and like, like yeah. I'm sure you had friends that like tried going down the same path as you, but then they're now working at like. A company that maybe they're not super proud of, or they don't enjoy the work that they're producing. Yeah, yeah. Like I've had more why. than yeah, more than one friend who just hated it because of whatever reason. But like after you get rid of that reason, it's it's really nice. Like actually, the thing I hated the most was doing commissions for like individual people and not companies. Like um. I don't know that. Yeah, cause like it, it's not to imply like every person who I've um done a personal commission for is awful. It's like, th that's totally not the thing. It's just, those are a lot more stressful because there's more of them, like, when I do them. And, like, people can be a real hassle to work with <clears throat> when it's, like, their personal character and stuff. And, like, I'd rather just work with a company that, like, lays out from the beginning what they expect. Oh, actually, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and, like, they want then revisions or, like... Yeah. Or it's even worse when the people don't realize how much time you're putting into a piece. Yeah. Yeah, that can it's, be awful. It's frustrating. Like, that's why I prefer just doing my own things and people paying for that. Like, I just want to, like, work on my own stuff, and if people like it, they can support it, and that's it. Like, I don't need anything else, really, to be happy. Yeah. I feel like that's, like, the dream job. It is. It's so... It's just... It's nice. Mm-hmm. Right, let's see. Someone's asking, uh, Purple Cacleon, what kind of tablet are you using? Uh, I'm using a 13-inch HD uh, Wacom Cintiq. Oh, yeah. I have a question for you then, because I have the same one, but I don't use it as much because the cord was giving me such a problem. Oh, my gosh. Are you someone who had that, too? Yeah. Oh, so this is a thing. 
Apparently, someone like warned me, like as I got one, they were like, "You better watch out, cause my cord uh, had issues and it stopped working." And I was like, "That's weird. Yeah. That's really weird." Cause I had just gone through three Cintiq companions, and I was I like, "Tumblr." And Tumblr. <laughs> yeah, I was so freaking cheesed off by that. So I was like, "All right, 13 inch. People say it's good." Please don't let me down. And I get that message like right after it was ordered. And I was like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So like, yeah, I have it on my lap a lot. I don't use it on my desktop. And if I like move around too much or the cord just get, gets bumped, like the screen will turn off briefly. Oh, so you do know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Does that happen to you? Oh, like to the point where I don't even use it anymore. Oh, like super, wow. Okay, because it hasn't happened super frequently to me, but like it'll happen like uh, I, I don't know, like, every other day. And, like, oh. one time, it, like, turned off and, like, um, just kind of stopped. And I was like, you better not be failing me now. Like, <laughs> I I just went through this companion garbage. I don't need this happening, too. And uh, I had to, like, unplug the cord and plug it back in, and it worked. And I was like, okay. You know, because... You know, you hate that, and it's like, well, is it going to happen again? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, the uncertainty. Like, how am I supposed to focus on just working and not worrying when this could happen at any moment? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's I'm surprised yours was, like, every other day. Mine was, like, every ten minutes. Are you kidding me? How long had you had yours before that happened? Um... I bought mine, like, the first week, and I would... Like, the first week it came out, I was super excited. I was like, I need this, and Sing it. Oops. I think it just muted me for a second there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I had it for a week, and then it, that's when the problem started happening. A week. And that's... I was like, got to be like, I just got this, you know. Did you like return it or like say hey, you know? No, I'm one of those people. I don't. I wish this is like a terrible habit where I just deal with it. No. <laughs> No, because, like, they'll just replace it. Will they really? Like, is there a dude, year one? Dude, listen, like, I, I got three Cintiq Companions. It wasn't that I bought three. They replaced it twice. Really? Yes. So if you still have... Like, when did you buy it? I bought it last April, I believe. Like, so this past April? No. <laughs> oh, no! Or wait... Well, no, 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 yeah, it was last year, never mind. Like, 2014 or 13? 13. Oh, no. No! So honestly, like, I've, I've switched over to using a tablet again, and I've become a lot comfortable with it. That's good, but also very tragic. <laughs> I know, I, I really shouldn't just, like, deal with things like that. No, either. definitely not, because I was, like, I couldn't work on my stuff otherwise, because, like... My big my big one uh, was causing me, like, arm and wrist problems. So I was like, I literally can't work on this. And I was so upset. Did you like the bigger one, then? It was just the um, problems that you didn't like? Well, that's the only reason I got a different one is because, like, um, I had problems with my arm, and I couldn't draw on it. And I was, like, doing arm exercises to, like, try and relieve that. But, like, the angle I had been drawing at for so long, like, with my arm kind of being in the air somewhat, just sort of caused problems that I didn't know would be a problem. Hmm. You so how, do you draw with your wrist or with your arm? Because I hear that. I draw with my arm, but I had, like, an elbow nerve thing going on. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, like, I would hold my arm. Uh, it's hard to explain, but it was like, I was like, okay, I'm definitely drawing right with my wrist. So there shouldn't be any problems. But then my my whole arm had a problem. I was like, okay, I didn't foresee that. <laughs> like this is not gonna happen. Yeah. All right. Someone's asking Mel, what are your blending blending settings? I have so many brushes that have different settings, but what works best for you? Oh, uh, I I don't know. I have a bunch of different ones. Just they're just kind of set to whatever, and then I like switch around when I feel like I'm bored of the strokes I'm making. I'm sorry, that's really not a good answer. Because like, I was thinking it's just you like, have a transfer in Shape Dynamics turned on. Huh? What'd you say? Sorry. Um, do you have Shape Dynamics and Transfer turned on, or whatever the it is in I, the... Yeah, I just have, like, you know, um, I have, like, pressure and size. 
just whatever in blend, they all are set to pressure. So, like, I I don't know. I just have a bunch of different brushes, and they're just all, like, whatever settings. Because mm-hmm. I think people rely, or at least maybe a lot of people ask me, like, do you turn your opacity down in your brushes? But it's usually just the uh, amount of pressure you put on the tablet, just less. Yeah. Yeah, like, I'll just make, like, tiny strokes or, like, super hard ones. Um, I That's it. I've always found that to work better. Yeah. All right, so Julia is asking, I want to go into freelancing, but at the same time, I've really wanted to be do something like a concept artist for a company. Do you guys have any suggestions? Uh, you should do the type of concept work that you would want to do in a company. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a really bad idea to, like, try and tailor your portfolio to work that you're not even interested in doing. Because you'll get hired for that, and then you won't be interested in doing it. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like when a character artist tries to do environment art and gets hired. Yeah, here, no. <laughs> like, uh, not what I wanted to do. Yeah. But at the same time, I almost blame the artist for misleading the company a little bit. Yeah, it's like, don't advertise if you're not interested in it. Yeah, exactly. So, like, that's really the biggest tip is please, please only draw things that you, like, care about drawing. Um, if you don't, you're going to end up a little miserable. Mm-hmm. If not a lot of miserable. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now Yaxel's asking, did you study in art school or did you learn by yourself? Both. Um, I went to MICA for, yeah. like, a year and a half. And then, like, that was at the time where the housing market crashed or whatever. So getting loans was really hard. But furthermore, I realized I didn't care about getting loans. So I was, like, just tired of all the classes. It was, like, what were even the classes I was taking? I can't even remember them because they were boring. One of them was, like, realism inking, basically. So, like... Or, like, super realism pencil, too. It was, like, super realism stuff, and I had no interest in that. None. I didn't want to do, like, intricate inking that took hours of real-life things. Like, I had no freaking interest in that. (laughs) And that's, like, the only class I even remember. Like, the other ones... Yeah, the other ones weren't ones I wanted to take... I mean, for the final semester. Um, Yeah, yeah, sorry. Like, um, that was what made me go, like, I I don't want to do this anymore. I, like, literally quit three days later. Seriously? How much time did you have to get to your, or, like, to graduate? Oh, man, there were still, like, two and a half years if I wanted to have graduated, and I was just, like, there was, oh, man, it was so expensive to go to private school, too, and it's not like I had any uh, support, like, financially. So it was, like, all on me to find loans, and that was, like, I don't know if I would say I regretted that because, like, I learned things that set me on the right path to learning more things by myself. But, like... That's tough. It's so... It was so frustrating. Like, they don't set it up to make it easy for people to go to school. They, like, set it up so it's easy for parents to pay for school. Like, dealing with financial stuff was a nightmare. One art school is so expensive, too. Yeah, it was like thirty five thousand a year or whatever. Yep, that's how much my school was too. Yeah, and it was just like I don't I don't really know if I wanna pay like a hundred forty thousand for this like when it's not a guarantee of anything. When like I started to realize our school was about like how much work you're willing to put into what you do. That was so frustrating. I was like, why do I need this? I can just go work on my own and make friends who, like, really try hard at what they do. Exactly. That's why whenever people ask me, like, do you recommend art school? It's like, no. While you can make connections, I would say overall you can learn and teach yourself anything just from, like, internet, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's come to that point. Like, I started to learn the 3D model stuff from a guy's tutorial. I was like okay, like, this is really hard. And I tried from, like, uh, 
really long tutorials and stuff, and I was like, this is garbage. And I felt really discouraged, because it was like, how am I supposed to learn this if I didn't learn it in school with a teacher? And then, like, I realized it was a matter of finding, like, the correct tutorial. And that's, that can be really hard when you don't know what you're looking for. Which yeah. is why you make friends who, like, are into that stuff, and you, like, genuinely show an interest in it. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, that's what I ended up realizing. Like, I don't know, like, has it worked that way for you, too? Like, like... Oh, yeah. Like, even just through Concept Cookie, like, even right now, I met you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that's making a connection. Because, like, I would say the friends that I, I make are the ones that are often really busy and, like, really head first into their work. Yeah. So it's not like, I don't even need to, like, talk with them as much, as much as I know I appreciate and, like, I understand how, like, work-heavy just can be time-consuming. Yeah, like a lot of my friends, we we don't talk for like a week or two, and then we'll just say a few words and we catch up a little bit. And it's like that's I like that, I like that we can just catch up because we both work on stuff and we both know the other is always doing that. Mhm. Mm that's not to discourage people from like oh you have to lose all your friends if you undo it. Oh no, <laughs> yeah I don't mean that. <laughs> all right, let's see. Oh, there's a lot of questions. Let me. I'll start popping them at you really quick. All right, Purple Caclean, what shape is your brush? Like simple circle or middle flat or noise? None of that. It's a bar, which is like, um, hold on. I'll make a new one real quick. Oops. Shoot, where is it? Okay. It's like, like literally the shape you see when I first make a stroke. It's like, like the actual brush itself looks like it's trying to do this shape, like a rectangle, whenever that shows up. Like that's like the shape I like using is rectangles. Because I like, um, when I painted in school, like oil painting and stuff, I uh, would always like using like the rectangle brushes. So, yep. So even even for like small sketching stuff, you always use the rectangle. Yeah, always, always. Huh. Okay, someone asked. Anna's asking, what time of day do you find you work best? Um, like two a.m. to like seven a.m. <gasps> no way! I'm a two a.m. guy too. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> it's like... Do you ever tell your family that and they look, look at you like super weird? Yeah! Like, uh. it's, it's so quiet. Like, I really like it. Like, no one's awake, no one's bothering me, except the cats, I guess. And, like, uh, I don't know. No, I fully agree. I think, like, past midnight's my prime time. Yeah. All right, so... Um, Dennis Brown's asking, since you are using a 13-inch Cintiq, do you draw with your elbow or shoulder? Uh, hmm, both. I just was looking real quick. <laughs> Double check. Yeah, I didn't want to be, like, misleading. Uh, okay, so Ryan Sanders is asking, for a commission concept piece, how do you find a balance between your own personal style and the client's specs slash branding? Oh, geez. I mean, that depends on the client. Like, if you're doing specific work for a company, you have to, like, know how flexible they are with that sort of thing. Um, like, I know, well, I guess I'll use an example of, like, the Adventure Time cover. Like, they always have had, like, a lot of really zany covers that are just totally in the artist style, and that's, like, the appeal is, like, the alternate cover is a special edition of the artist style. And it'll just be completely random. And, like, that's, I mean, that's the thing for those comic covers is, like, they're expecting that. But, like, if you're working on um, different versions of a mascot that already exists for them, like, you're going to have to stick to them more closely. So, I mean, it really depends, especially if it's, like, a personal commission. Like, you have to, like, know what they're looking for anyway. And it's kind of weird if someone seeking a personal commission from you, like doesn't let you know that. Yeah. So. 
Like, people should usually let you know, I think, for that sort of thing. You would think so, yeah. Yeah, you should always ask if you're not sure. Oh, here's a great question. Yeah. Ready for this one? Yeah. So someone's asking, how do you find, in quotes, art friends? I end up having a lot of trouble finding artists who will chat or even speak a few words to me. It gets pretty frustrating and lonely. Oh, that's rough. Um, for me, it was specifically by being in communities where people drew the same things I drew. And um, also, like, I don't know. Like, I've been doing that since I was, like, 11, so it's hard to, like, I don't know. <laughs> Did you make any in uh, art school that you feel you're so close with today? No. Oh, like, really? Yeah, actually, art school was a place where I went to class, I did all of my work, I came home, did my homework, and then I did commissions, and that was, like, every day. What? Like, yeah, I, did, I didn't really, like, hang out or, like, talk a lot, because, like, I... It's really hard to do that if it's not with people who share my interests. Yeah, actually, so, very true. Yeah, it was just kind of hard. So finding art friends is difficult if you're not around people. Well, for me, it's like if I'm not around people who I know share things I care about, I, I don't talk a lot. So it might be a case of, like, you need to look for, like, specific communities where people draw the thing that you like drawing, too. Mm -hmm. And you have to speak up. Yeah. Like, you have to go out of your way. expect it to happen, where it's like, no, you got to put in effort yourself to at least make the first conversation happen. Yeah, like, um, like I have the luxury now of, like, people approach me, and it's really nice, but, like, I still, if it's someone I want to, like, become friends with or, like, talk to because I respect their work, I'm like, hey, you know, I really liked your work, and I'll, like, leave a more detailed comment about it. I'll be like, I really appreciate this, um... Thank you for whatever. Uh, it'd be cool if like we talk sometime or just whatever. Like you could just be really respectful and polite, and that goes a really long way because people really enjoy hearing that others like their work, and sometimes that can lead to something. Especially like if you're like, I like this sort of thing. Like if you ever want to check it out, like here's something I drew along the same lines. Just it's it's not really hard. It can be intimidating, but like the worst thing that'll happen is like they don't say anything. Yeah. That's like the best part is like usually our people want to talk anyways. Yeah. Especially if you give them a compliment, that's a great way to start the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Just like be sincere in your words and it goes a long way. Let's see. We got, how do you think it would be to do freelance alongside another career? Because right now I'm considering that and I'm concerned that I might not have time for anything else. Um, you probably won't. Like, that's the realistic <laughs> answer. Um, I'd rather you say like an honest answer than try to sugarcoat it though. Yeah, no, like it, it sucks because a lot of people ask me like, what else do you do in your free time? I'm like, what, what free time? time? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, that's, it's really up to you, like if you just like working, that's fine, and that's what I like doing, so. Oh, that's probably the other thing, yeah. Like, you have to genuinely enjoy just drawing for hours. Yeah. You have to, I like... sometimes you know, people don't understand that. Yeah, it, it, they get really frustrated, like, if things don't turn out right. And it's like, I totally understand that. But you have to work past that or you're not going to, like, survive. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't take... You don't have the luxury of breaks like that if you're doing art. No, oh, yeah, definitely not. Is rough. So now, uh, Yaxel is asking, how do you find clients or new projects? Do you use normal publicity as websites, business cards, send portfolios, etc.? Oh, you you have to post your art like as many places as you can, but you also have to be willing to engage with other people. I think. Mhm. Mm it's man, that's like a hard thing to explain. Well, and social media is a whole other, like, area that I think artists have to put themselves out there, too. Yeah, you really do. Like, you can't expect people to do it for you. And I think it's what you said earlier. Like, if you're not pushing your own art, like, no one's going to see it. Yeah, exactly. Like, 
how, how can you expect them to if you're not posting as much as you can as often as you can? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, someone's asking both of you. May I ask what are the layers on your drawing? Uh, um, I guess I can show that off. Um, well, I have a sketch layer, and then, like, colors underneath, and then I do, like, layer mode stuff, and then I just render it. Like, I don't, I don't have a lot of layers. And you can see just the rendering layer still has a lot of the image in it. Because mm -hmm. I basically redrew it. <laughs> Do you often feel like that when you are doing the rendering phase? I yeah. Like it's, it's like, yeah, some of the original sketch is still there, but for the most part I'm reworking most of it. it, it that's really what it is. Like, I consider the sketch and, like, the undercolor, I consider that to be, like, a guide. Like, yes. that's it's not supposed to be like concretely how it is forever. It's supposed to be like I know it's weird to people, but like the colors and everything, like the sketch work, that all of that is the sketch. Like like the colors and everything. It's all a sketch. I think too many artists uh either they get too scared and they just make a new layer for every single little adjustment they want to make. No. I think sometimes you have to like trust yourself a little more. Yeah, dude, on that topic, it's so, so hard sometimes when I, like, hate how a piece is coming out. And I'm like, holy crap, I really want to restart this, but I'm already really far in. Like, especially if it's, like, a commission that I just need to get done. It's mm -hmm. the most frustrating thing in the entire world to know, like, okay, I hate this, I can salvage this, but at the moment and for, like, the next 20 minutes, I'm going to hate it. Because then you just have to trust yourself that you're not wasting your time. And it is so hard. Oh, yeah. That's incredibly hard. Because, like, when you suffer with that feeling of hate, how are you supposed to get past, past that? So it's, like, that's my, like, my least favorite part of uh, trusting myself is it's so hard. Here's a good one. Um, how much time a day would you say is a healthy amount of hours to draw? <laughs> because I find myself on the weekends drawing from like 9 a.m. to 5 a.m. sometimes, and I really mess up my sleep pattern. Um, well, I don't have a sleep pattern, so I would say, yeah. <laughs> um, I think as long as you take breaks for your arms to rest them and do wrist exercises, and uh, make sure you're not too sore. It doesn't really matter. You just have to be really careful about working like that. Because if you don't take breaks and you don't make sure your arms are healthy, uh, you will really, really mess them up later. And that's like you can't keep working that way. Actually, you should explain what happened in like your situation. Oh yeah. Okay. So basically, with my Cintiq I was using, uh, I would sit up and I was like, okay. I'm not bending my wrist, so I'm doing it, you know, I'm doing it right. That's what I thought, is if you don't, like, flick your wrist, you're not going to uh, give yourself any sort of wrist issue. But, like, I didn't rest my arm on anything. I was just holding my arm up in the air to draw at kind of, like, a bent angle. And, like, I didn't realize this, but it was affecting my elbow, even though I was using, like, my shoulder to move around. And, uh... I had been doing that on my Cintiq for, in that pose, um, I worked that way for, how long did I have that? Five years? So it was a while, it was like four and a half years of working in a way that was straining on my elbow. So you, and I didn't like do like whole arm exercises because I didn't know I was supposed to. Like I had no idea. So you really, really need to take care of your arm, even stretching it every hour, just for like 20 seconds, and uh, that will go a really, really long way to preserving your body and making sure you can still draw. Because mm -hmm. whenever I hear about an artist that has like a wrist or elbow injury, it's like... It's tragic. Oh. Yeah. Because then it's painful to draw. It's painful, and then you get like a psychological like fear about it. Um, you, you don't want to draw even though you do, and it makes you feel bad about drawing, 
and it's just overall really unpleasant. So yeah, just just do your best to take care of your body. Please, please, please listen. If you don't know what sort of exercises to do, and that's like your reservation, I absolutely recommend like googling like um, arm exercises for artists, or like carpal tunnel syndrome, or like um, anything, anything like that, and you'll find at least something. And as long as you're stretching your arm, it'll be cool. Mm-hmm. All right, so now um, Dennis is asking, have you worked with other types of digital art? You mentioned trying to learn 3D modeling, but did you continue pursuing it? And um, any others you worked with as well? Um, yeah, I still do 3D stuff, but really slowly, because I only started learning that like uh, a couple months ago. And uh, I made, a, how many models? I made like two or three models. And um, it's really fun, but there's so much, so much to learn about it, to do it like efficiently and to like um, understand the program more, that it's going to take me a lot longer to learn it more thoroughly just because like I don't actually have time for that. I was making time. Like I was pretending I had time in order to work on that. So um, aside from that, like I don't do any other like visual art digitally that I can think of right now. I've worked in Flash for like Flash animation stuff and like um what else? Yeah, I don't know. I've done animation stuff. I don't have a lot of time for that lately just because of all the stuff I'm doing, but 3D stuff is really fun. Mm -hmm. Do you say uh, you can also learn from like lighting and shadow from it? That's what I usually hear with 3D modelers when they try doing like digital art. Oh, well, you know, if I had, like, learned 3D first and then done, uh, like, digital art and stuff, I probably would feel that way, but, like, I learned it totally the opposite, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so it's, like, um, I already had a good idea about, like, the sort of lighting and shadows I like doing. So I don't know if I would say I've learned so much about that from it. Okay. Um, okay, someone. Oh, someone's asking me what brush are you using from the Concept Cookie brush set. Um, usually, the only brushes I ever use is like a circle hard edge brush, circle soft edge brush, or a chalk brush. And literally, those are like the only three. And I, I always get asked um, about like what brushes I use because I think people think like there's magic brushes that. <laughs> yeah. But really, it I think it can come down to the basics, and it really just depends on the artist and how they use those um, tools. Yeah. Because, I mean, every now and then, I think there are, like, specific that are nice for if you're trying to do something really fast, like scales. I think yeah. sometimes a brush would be easier to lay over and then, like... Oh, yeah. So for that, I can kind of understand using specific brushes. I mean, I totally get that. But it's weird when people ask about, like, a specific brush for a whole piece of artwork. Yes. You feel like? Do you ever feel like you bounce around through a few every piece? Yeah, like I I can't tell you what I do because I just sort of do do it. Yeah, I know how much people hate hearing that too, and like I understand why, but like I promise that like just messing around with brushes, you start to figure it out. Mhm. Mm yeah, I agree. Um, Sean McKinney is asking, do you draw traditionally at all, or is everything digital? Oh, uh, traditional, yeah, all the time. Like, I have a sketchbook I take with me wherever I go. Do you and really? If I, yeah, I have, like, I have multiple. I'll take, like, three sketchbooks just in case I want to draw it in, like, the other one. You know, I think it's kind of important that digital artists do traditional work, too. Oh, I think it's insanely important, yeah. Like, a lot of people don't value it as much once they've learned to do digital, digital stuff, and, like, that. I don't know, that's weird. Like, I think they're both really important to help each other. 
I think that almost limits the artist from learning new things if they only they like are selective with I'm only gonna do digital from now on. Yeah, it's just weird. Okay, someone's asking, do you plan to work on a big project as like a comic manga or video game? Uh well I have like a specific comic I've been working on for over a year now. So I don't know if it's like, do you plan to as much as are you gonna keep doing it? <laughs> and like, I'm gonna do it for like as long as I can. Um, I do like full painted color pages for it, and it's like a lot of fun. When you were a kid, did you ever like have a company you thought you would be working for? No, because when I was a kid, I didn't think I would be an artist. Oh really? What, what do you think you were? Be? Well, like when I was a kid, like no one told me you could be an artist. Oh. Yeah, like, I drew anyway, and, and it wasn't like my mom was like, you can't be an artist. But, like, she didn't, she, like, took it seriously at the same time she didn't. Like, she would get me art supplies, but also make it out, like, if I didn't go to a regular college for a regular degree, then I wouldn't, like, have a good life or something. And I was just, like, or I don't know. Hobby. It was weird. I, like, learned she was full of crap pretty early. <laughs> But yeah, no one told me. No one told me like you could be an artist. I just didn't know that um, for a very long time. And then like in my senior year of high school, I was like, wait, I can apply to art school? Like, it was really weird. Yeah, it is a weird journey. So normally, like people, or at least the ones I talk to, they're always like, yeah, I knew from like when I was five or six that that's what I wanted to do forever. Well, apparently I did too, <laughs> but not. I didn't like consciously know it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like, I was always like, I love drawing. But, like, no one told me it could be a career, so I was just like, I'm going to keep drawing and then also do whatever I'm supposed to do to be an adult. And it turned out that was keep drawing. To be an adult. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's a good one. Okay, someone's asking... I'm in a small-time art class, and the teacher keeps telling me I should do thumbnail drawings, but I have a hard time coming up with them, and it generally makes it not fun. Do you have any tips on thumbnailing uh, drawings? Oh, my God. Your art teacher is actually right. Like, <laughs> please, please, please try your best to start learning what it means to thumbnail. Um, I, I absolutely thumbnail all of my comic pages out. Um, all of my big illustrations I thumbnail, too. It will be expected of you when you do work for companies, too. Because they'll want to see, like, here's some thumbnail drawings of the composition. And you have to start thinking about it in a way that's um, not, oh, this thumbnail drawing's a, a bad sketch that I can't finish. It's like, you, you have to think about a thumbnail as just, I, I, I want to say, like, try and make it fun. Because I know, I know it just seems really boring to do out, like, little planning like that. But if you spend, like, one minute on a thumbnail, you'll find it's not really a chore as much anymore. Uh, you're not supposed to spend a really long time on thumbnails. Like, that's absolutely not the point. The point is to get the composition across. The, the goal of a thumbnail is to look at it and go, I understand the way the shapes are moving here. Um, when I actually draw this piece, I'll know where to place things. It's not trying to be like a sketch. Don't think of it as a sketch, because it's, it's not. It's like a, it's planning for a sketch. I think too many people, like, spend too much time on a thumbnail. Yes, yes, there's no reason to do that. Like, like maximum is, like, five minutes on a thumbnail. That's if it's a really complicated piece. Yeah, Cause, like, definitely max. <laughs> yeah, because, like, I know for my uh, comic thumbnails for, like, the Steven Universe cover, like, I was like, oh, man, i got to show these thumbnails to the uh, editor. Okay, what do I even want to draw? So I actually drew out, like... Five different versions of like the thumbnail I ended up making, and like that was fine because I spent like two minutes per thumbnail, and like if it wasn't coming out well, I just started a new one. And you don't, you can't be afraid of just starting a new sketch. Don't try to make every sketch perfect. It's not gonna be. I had like a whole page of failed thumbnails, and that's fine. Like that's the point is that you mess up the thumbnail. You don't want to mess up the sketch. You don't want to mess up the thing you spend like two hours on. Yeah. Oh, what's that called? Oh, becoming not becoming attached to it. Yeah. Yeah, those are great tips about thumbnailing. Really. 
Oh, here's a really interesting one. Um, someone says, as a South African, clients are expected are expecting my art to be African, even though my um, portfolio doesn't have anything African. Any suggestions on how to get over stereotypes? Oh no, that's really really unfortunate. Yeah. Oh shoot. I don't even know what to say to that. Like I've I've not encountered that sort of weird stereotyping before. You neither have I, really. Especially if like your portfolio doesn't like show that at all. Like why would anyone expect that? Why would anyone expect something outside of your portfolio? That's rough. I would almost say maybe apply to Amer more American freelance jobs then. Yeah. Yeah. Is, like the norm over there, I would say that's really tough. Yeah, like everyone's just kind of expecting that no matter how you draw. I, I mean, I, I guess try and branch away from that because that's, yeah, I don't know what else to say to that. Like I apologize, I don't have better advice. I just, you know what? Like, I think America does have its own stereotype. Do you ever feel like um, with like female characters, they have to look a specific way? Yeah, and I hate that. Actually, mm -hmm. I was really frustrated walking into a comic shop like um, two weeks ago. Uh, I just like looked around and I was like, "Holy crap!" Like every character looked the same. Like it wasn't like every female character looked like like huge. <laughs> like chest and like huge butt area with like giant lips and I was like dude like that's boring it's so boring mm -hmm. and like people just draw that way because everyone draws that way and it just like feeds on itself and it's really weird oh it's awful that's right I don't know if do you know oops wait there we go all right, Mel. Hmm. You know uh, League of Legends at all? Yes. Um, when Jinx was released, I thought that was like the greatest concept ever. I actually haven't like kept up on the new stuff. Oh, pretty much it was just this character that was like flat chested, and um, she became like the biggest hit of League of Legends. Huh. I thought that was really interesting that. Uh, like a character can be successful and not have the stereotypes of what a female character. Oh. Yeah, like. absolutely. And, like, I guess people are, like, scared to trust that. Mm -hmm. It's so weird. Like, you make a good character, it doesn't have to look a specific way. Exactly. Oh, here's a pretty general question I think that's asked a lot is, where do you get inspiration or ideas? Um, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like... I guess that's part of the reason I don't feel too bad about like when I'll take a break for video games or what or reading a book or whatever is like I draw inspiration from everything. Like I only consume media that I enjoy some part of and like those things usually work their way into my work somehow, just like some aspect I enjoy and I like interpret it in a, a new way for my own work to like express enjoying that, I guess. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, Jessica's asking, what inspired you to create Floriverse? Um, well, that was like, that started from a concept I had like 10 years ago. Uh, I just, someone drew original art on like DeviantArt a long time ago, and I was like, holy crap, like you can draw original things? Like I know this is like, the, that was like the dumbest revelation ever, <laughs> but like, I was like mystified as like a 14 year old. I was like, oh man, I can make things up. Like, I have this power. It's like, I'll make up original things, too. So, like, I started I started off with something really dumb. Like, one of my first doodles was, um, one of my first original doodles was, like, a little fuzzy thing with a flower on its head. <laughs> and, like, I was like, oh, this is so cool. This is so original. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> you know, I was, like, 14. <laughs> but, like, yeah, from there, um, I just kept liking the idea of combining um, plants and animals in different ways and and messing around and obviously like inspiration from Pokemon's present because I like love cre creatures and stuff and uh, like yeah I don't know a lot of things inspire me like a lot of different creature related stuff because I really like people interpreting just new ways creatures would have developed and evolved to look a certain way and to whatever, 
I enjoy that a lot. So that kind of like spawns the whole floor idea. Oh, I like this question a lot. Okay. What would you say to the artist you were five years ago? I would say stop caring what people think and just draw pictures because you'll it'll turn out okay and you'll save yourself a lot of trouble just not caring. Mm -hmm. I think there's definitely a switch where you have to stop doing art for other people and you do it for yourself then. Yes. Yes, definitely. At that point in time, I had been doing like a lot of commissions for people. And like I had to because like I was in art school and like that was how I made like food money and like rent money and everything else. So, you know, it was like I had to do stuff for other people and I wasn't really happy because I just kind of like took people's crap a lot more cuz I was really it was really scary like, well, what if they say that I said no on changing this part of their picture when they weren't supposed to ask that in the first place as part of our conditions. Then they'll tell people I'm mean and that'll suck for business or whatever. Like I had like the weird mindset like people had control over me even if they were unreasonable and it was like I would love to tell that person from back then like you know what set up fair conditions and then don't let people walk all over you and just don't care what they say and just work hard. Did you ever undervalue yourself with, like, pricing? Yeah. Like, I think every artist ends up doing that at some point before, like, they break out of that. Um, I, like, th okay, this is a really, this rule of thumb, I think, has held true for me a lot, is that, like, when you undervalue your work, you get a lot more stingy, like, mean people who are just kind of, they don't care as much about your work as they care about like getting the most value out of their five dollars or whatever. Um, so they aren't people who actually care about supporting you. They're just kind of people who want to like whip someone around for five dollars so they they'll hang over your head. So like um, it's important to not undercharge. Because when you charge, like, the right pl price, or even if you, like, charge more than you think you should, or even more than you normally would, you'll still get people who um, want to support you. And those are the people who, like, you can feel, like, good doing, spending a while on their artwork because they'll just like it no matter what, and you can just have fun with it. Like, those are the best clients when you actually charge what you should be charging. Mm -hmm. Like, un undercharging is the worst possible thing you can do for, like, a fun experience because you'll be thinking about, Man, I'm not making enough money to be like jerked around like this. And yeah, exactly. it's, it's horrible. Here's a good question. Um, people in my country do not understand what a what is a professional artist. Do you have problems with social pressure or family issues? Um. Yeah, sometimes, but like probably not to the extent you do, because like as soon as my family was weird about me wanting to do art, I just decided not to talk to them anymore. And I know that's not an issue or not a um, feasible solution for a lot of people. Um, so it can help to like do things and show the people around you that you do these things, like that you get these projects done and that like you have clients or that you have worked hard to complete this project. Like it it helps to like show them what you actually do, I think. Yes. And it definitely helps when you can actually make money from it and like show people. Yeah, yeah. Like this is uh, well, I totally agree there, cause like, when I was in like my senior year of high school, my like I was living with my aunt and uncle at that time, and, um, and my uncle is a really like no nonsense. Everyone needs to get a job as soon as they're able, whatever. But I had been doing commissions for like three years prior to that, so 
So he was like, you, you need to go find a job. And I was like thinking, like, I don't want to do that. Like, I do commissions. I make more money than I would in less time than I would at, like, a quote-unquote normal job. So, like, I ended up just, like, applying to, like, one place, hoping they wouldn't call me back, and they didn't. And I just kept making money, and I was, I, like, they didn't say anything because they realized I was making money. And that was, like, it. That was the end of it. Oh, really? They never asked you again? They never cared again because they saw, like, I had money appearing in my bank account. So. Mm -hmm. I think that's all that matters. When people start to realize, oh, like, you can make a profit from digital art. Yeah. That's really all there is, is, like, you got to show them. Sometimes you're still going to have, like, family members who just don't see it as a real job no matter what. And, like, when possible, you have to, like, not listen to them. And if you can, just, like, cut them out. Because it's, like, not worth the stress of having people tell you what you do isn't real. Like, that's not fair to you. If you, if you, I understand if you can't do that, if you're not, you don't have the luxury of being in that position. Like, that's... Like I feel really bad when people are in that that position because like what do you what can you do? You just keep drawing and it can be really hard. So, yeah. like just do what you can. Try and show people it's legitimate. If they don't believe you, they weren't gonna believe you anyway, and they just want you to do what they want you to do, and that's not cool. Okay, let's see here. Um, someone's saying, I'm 16 and started in gymnasium. Uh, I think that's college in the U.S. I think there might be a social barrier here. Okay, the amount of homework and social gatherings have been very overwhelming. I haven't drawn for a couple months, just small doodles. Should I find time to draw and drop some of the other um, stuff I do? Oh, that depends a lot and if, like, drawing's a thing you want to do. Like, if, if you really really need to draw and like it's hurting you I guess to not be able to do it if, sorry if it's hurting you not be able to do it uh, you need to find time to do it but like if it's just like a passing interest like you know finding more time to doodle or like taking your sketchbook everywhere you go that can be really nice until you decide if that's like something you want to do more seriously or not and it's really nice to do anyway just keep the sketchbook with you wherever you go mm-hmm yeah, I agree to that. Sometimes you'll find inspiration like the oddest places. Dude, yeah, definitely. Um, someone's asking, are you going to do an art book someday? Oh, I guess that depends on what they mean by art book. Because, like, I would love to do, like, a tutorial book sort of thing someday. I don't have time for that yet. I would also love to do, like, a book of, like, illustrations and stuff. But, like, I also don't have time for that yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think time's the biggest thing with digital artists. Yeah. I wish I had more all the time. <laughs> more time all the time. Yeah. Um, Capella says that they have a fix for the cord problem on the 13 Cintiqs now. Do they? They said if you get one now, they send you a new one. They no longer just send out refurbished ones from before. Okay. I guess that's nice to know. Like, is it really a problem with the cord or the whole thing itself? I found more of a problem with the cord. Because I actually bought a second cord just in case. Oh, did you really? Yeah, I mean, I didn't realize I didn't need to, but this, huh. <laughs> Someone said environment art and modeling is for the birds. It's, modeling is fun, but, like, I like drawing. I like texturing the most. 
Yes, that's my favorite part about digital art. It's really fun. Oh, are you talking like 3D modeling? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I also like that kind of... Yeah. Like, I like both. You, you that's why text, I like I think, 2D, no. Yeah. I've been away from 3D for so long. Did you used to do it? Uh, my Actually, when I went to school, they didn't teach Photoshop or drawing or anything. So my what? background is actually... I know, my background's actually in 3D art. Huh. So I graduated as a 3D artist, but what, what was kind of funny, and this is a story I tell people, is I always knew I wanted to draw. Like, even while I was yeah. in school, I would always just draw on the side. So I taught myself Photoshop. So, like, yeah. I didn't actually need art school because I taught everything myself. Yeah. But the connections I made, I think, kind of made it worth it. I still think art school is overpriced. But what's funny is when I graduated, they tried to fail me. And what? Because I my portfolio was all 2D stuff, and they're like, I'm sorry, Tim, but this is a school that produces 3D artists. What? So what happened was they let me slide by. They gave me a D- in Portfolio 2. Oh, my God. And the kicker of it is the portfolio show that I was showing at, I got a job because my portfolio was 2D, and I got a job doing as a concept artist. That's so absurd. It was just very, like, <laughs> kind of crazy that that's how it came. It was like, come on, guys. Like, I don't, I'm not a 3D artist. That's not my passion. And then for me to get a job at the Portfolio Show was just, like, a relieving moment, well, I guess. That's, like, another example of, like, your portfolio should show the sort of thing you want to do. <laughs> yeah, always, 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 always. So when people ask you about, like, art college, what do you recommend them doing? Man, it's so hard, because I don't want to be, like, the person who goes, don't do art school, even though I did. Because, well, I mean, I guess that's a better reason to be able to say that. But, like, it's hard, because I don't want to, like, tell people to do it or not do it. I just want to, like, inform them, like, hey, this will put you in a lot of debt. If, if you have, like, parents who can pay for that, and you're, you're privileged enough to be able to do that without, like suffering crippling debt for 20 or 30 years, like, you know what, then, then go for it if you think you should. Like, like it would be great to be able to do art school, like, totally free for yourself, like, with parents paying for it. Like, that's, that's what so many people did, too. So it's like, I don't want to say don't do it because you can learn a lot, but I don't want to say just do it because sometimes people get the impression that doing art school automatically makes you good. Mm -mm. Like, I people get that mistaken impression a lot, and that's really upsetting. It's, it's like, the whole, what you're supposed to learn from art school, aside from getting connections, which people don't even do all the time, uh, yeah. what you're supposed to take from it is the ability to critique your own work, and the ability to uh, understand and figure out where to improve in your own work. Like, that is the single biggest thing I learned from art school was like having the right word said to me about what I wasn't doing right in order to go oh man I like understand where I just need to spend the rest of my focus forever. Like an eye-opening experience? Yes, because like this one point in time my illustration uh, teacher like he was doing uh, end of the year portfolio review which was really just like looking at all the works we've done in the class. It wasn't like super formal, but he would, um, it was like a one-on-one -on -one talk for like 10 minutes with each of us about like our works, and we had them all presented, and like he would give his overall statement, and like when I heard his on mine, I was like, holy crap, everything he just said is accurate, and I didn't like hearing any of it, so, <laughs> you know, it was like, it was awful, because I was like, damn, he's right, like everything he just said, he nailed it, and that, that sucks hard, because I'm really bad at these areas, he pointed out, but, like, once I got over, like, my my baby art school ego being bruised, I was like, okay, well, now I know what I can do from here, so. Mm-hmm. I think that it, takes a lot. Just learning how to take a critique is huge. Yeah. 
like, art school is great for that. I, like, I loved the critiques I got, even if I, like, hated hearing them sometimes. Because, like, I wouldn't say, like, oh, you're so wrong. I would just be, like, I would just be thinking, like, oh, my God, like, how can I even look at this artwork anymore? Like, mm -hmm. everything he just said is right. So yeah, the weirdest experience. When you have, like, an eye opening and then you look at your work yeah. and you're, like, oh, my gosh. You can suddenly see it everywhere, and you're like, how did I not see this? It's so obvious, and that's why they were paid to be a teacher. Exactly, yeah. Okay, we have about three minutes left, so any other questions you guys have, feel free to ask them now. Although, they've been really good about asking questions the entire time. Yeah, actually. I know, that's why I like live streams like this, I really enjoy it, because then I feel like the questions... Um, like, not only are there a lot of them, but then we have the time to get to as many as we can. Oh, yeah, they were super interesting. They were, like, good questions just for reference, too. Mm-hmm, yeah. But for some reason, I think my question loading thing stopped working, like, 20 minutes ago. Oh, no. I know, so I've been going through older questions. So I'm sorry if you guys have been asking questions. I just, the uh, Google Hangout, maybe it's because this is an hour and a half one. Normally I only do hour ones. I don't know. Oh. Uh, but either way, I mean, we were able to fill an hour and a half. Oh, pretty, yeah. This went by really fast for me. Yeah, actually, I didn't even realize. <laughs> That's a good thing, then. Yeah. Oh, you got a lot done. I really like the uh, how crazy the second one is. Oh, yeah, I was just like, what's something non-traditional? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you took that idea and ran with it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm trying to think of, like, what's the most asked question I get to kind of end off the stream with you? Hmm. A lot of the time it's just like, how do I get good with like doing form or working in color? And usually I just always say like, uh, time and practice. Yeah, um, studying people who do work like you want to do is really important too, I think. Oh, then you know what, this is a good question because I think you might get this a lot of one like, when is using reference, like you're copying the artist's work. You're not developing your own style. You're literally like stealing their style as your own. Oh man, okay. It's it's really easy. <laughs> I feel like you have to get this a lot. Yeah, yeah. Like a lot of people will directly take from my stuff and like I don't I don't, I don't have a problem with that in itself. It's like but please mention like, you know, at least where you get your inspiration. Cuz like when people fail to do that, it's not really it's kind of disingenuous, you know? It's frustrating to deal with on the artist's behalf. Um, and you know, there's like, uh, one of my friends once said like, to get your own style, that's something new, it's like, do your own thing, but also take inspiration from at least three different people. Like, if it's two different people who are like your biggest inspirations, your style's gonna look kinda like a mashup. And the people will easily be able to see. But if it's three different people, then it becomes like something different by then. So at least three people should be inspiring and in informing your work before your style start, starts to develop on its own. I like that. Like, um, I'm. Do you know like Feverworm and that whole a group? Uh uh. Cause they like I think there's a few artists that um they draw so similarly that oftentimes their work gets mistaken as someone else's, and I think that's oh. sometimes. Yeah, that's kind of rough. Where that would suck, where it's like um, if someone's, you know, doing their own work, but everyone's mistaking it as yours. Yeah, that that actually has happened. I, I, actually, what am I saying? I feel like I've seen a lot of stuff that I thought was done by you specifically, and it wasn't. Yeah, like my friends have, my friends have even been like, you know... I thought this was your piece, and they'll link something, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's someone who, like, hasn't found other inspiration yet. 
And it's like it's not like I resent them. I don't I don't even care that it's much. Not really cool about like, about it. Yeah, it's just like I wish I wish they'd be able to break out of that because I know people find inspiration. Like I know, for instance, when I was a kid, I like copied Pokemon artwork. I was like, man, I want to do exactly like Ken Sugimori because he draws Pokemon. That's so cool. And then like I started to realize like I really liked learning from it. And of course, I was always like, this is an imitation work, but like. I really like the experience of learning how he saw lines and stuff, and I think a lot of people are just doing that because they like how the person sees color and lines. But like, it's really important to mention you're doing that, and then to also try and break into your own thing. Like, there's nothing wrong with like enjoying someone's work and wanting to draw like them. You just need to realize that like, you gotta mention that, and then you also need to try and find your own thing. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's- Exactly, uh, the perfect answer for that. All right, well, I'm gonna cut off the stream. We're a little over, so thanks again, everyone, for coming to this live stream. You've been yeah. really good at asking questions and keeping this going. And obviously, thank you, Mel, for yeah. doing this with us. Thank you for inviting me. It was like a lot of fun, and I didn't even realize how quickly time went by. <laughs> yeah, well, who knows? Maybe on a future stream, we'll ask you to join us again. I would love to have you again. That would be great. So thank you, and uh, as always, we do these every Wednesday at 2 p.m., and that's Central Time, and that's minus 5 GMT outside of the States. And I usually post the topic about an hour or two beforehand, and next week we'll, we will have another digital artist, but next week we'll be on a Saturday, and that will be with James McDonald. So if you're interested in that, just know we are moving from Wednesday to Saturday next week. And I will post uh, what me and Mel created during the live stream so you can see the final results. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Bye, guys. See ya.